In this video, we're going to practice choosing between the chain rule and the product rule for calculus derivatives. So sometimes when you have a quiz just on one topic, you get on autopilot and you know exactly which rule to use because all the problems are the same rule. But then when you have the test on derivatives and it combines a whole bunch of different rules, it can be really hard to decide which one's the right one to use. So two of the most difficult to choose between rules are the chain rule and the product rule. So today we're going to practice a couple. Feel free to pause right here and try deciding for these eight problems whether you would use the chain rule or the product rule. Okay, so let's get started. For problem one, what you want to do is you want to look at the two main pieces of the function you're given and you want to see if they can survive on their own. So the two main pieces are x squared and sine x and when you cover up the other part they're standalone functions that could be their own problem. So that means that these are glued together with a product and so you would use the product rule for this problem. Okay, so for problem two now, our two main pieces of this function are the cosine and the e to the x. And if we cover up the e to the x and just look at the cosine, that's just a cos. It's just cosine but without any variable there. So that's actually not a standalone function. If we cover up the cosine part, we get e to the x, which is a perfectly fine standalone function. But because both parts can't stand alone as their own function, that's a hint that this is actually chain rule. This is composition of functions. And so you have to use the chain rule. Okay, so problem three. Let's look at each of the main parts of this function and see how it's put together. So one of the parts is 3x to the fourth, and the other part is ln. But the ln, when it's written like this without any variable, is not standalone. That's not a function that can stand by itself. The 3x to the fourth is fine, but the fact that the ln is just an ln is a hint that this is actually a chain rule problem. These functions are nested together. Okay, now problem four, if we look at the two main parts of this problem, we have 12x and we have e to the x. And each of those actually is its own standalone function. So these guys are glued together with multiplication right there. So this is a product rule derivative. Problem five, now the most common way to rewrite this problem would be with parentheses, where you have parentheses sine x to the third outside of the parentheses. This is just another notation for that. And so your two main parts of this function are the sine x part and the to the third power part. But if you look at the to the third power part, a little three floating in midair is not a standalone function by itself. The sine x is fine. This is a hint that this is actually nesting of functions and it is the chain rule. Okay, problem six. So for this one, we look at our two main parts of our function. We have an x squared part and we have an ln x part. And in this case, unlike the previous ln problem, this guy is actually a full ln x. So this guy by itself is a standalone function and the x squared is a perfectly fine standalone function. So that's a hint that these guys are glued together with multiplication and this is gonna be a product rule problem. 
Okay, and problem seven, if you look at this problem, make sure if you ever have a number out front of your function, don't let that trick you into doing product rule. Anytime you have a plain old number out front, that number just goes along for the ride and does not affect the derivative. So you can just think of this problem as seven times whatever the answer to this derivative is. So you focus on the meaty part of the function, that's e to the 12x. The two parts of this guy are the e part, e to the something, and the tucked away part, which is 12x. 12x is a standalone function, but here we have e to the blank. That guy is actually a nesting of functions. So that's a hint that this guy is going to be a chain rule problem. And for our last problem, problem 8. For this problem, we look at our two main parts of this function, and we have a plain old ln, and we have a 2 minus ln x. And ln without any variables is not a standalone function. Um, this part, 2 minus ln x, is perfectly fine as a standalone function. And so that's a hint that since this guy is not a standalone function, this has to be the chain rule. We have some nesting in that problem. Okay, so that's which derivative rule to use, product rule or chain rule, and how to tell the difference at a glance.